Welcome. We might have seen a setup like this a week or two past, asking in a general sense, when you're approaching a physics problem, which of these different frameworks to use. You might think of it as which equation to use, right? And how to approach how to figure that out. So please watch that video if you haven't. We'll try to get a link up in whatever. But also, this is specific to gravity. Specific to gravity, right, we have a very specific force that does conserve energy, that can be all of these different things, and of course, this is just after we've learned of this conservation. So we're going to approach it, right, very similar to what we did, but this is going to be very specific to gravity, just so we have an idea to do it just for gravity. So we're going to start just like we did start. When we begin, we want to have before and after states, and we want to draw an interaction diagram. So we're going to begin just as we had, and then we're going to ask, are our forces constant? Just like we did, but now specific to gravity, Looking at gravity, we can see right that G is not going to change. M and M, masses don't really change very easily, very nicely, without things getting very ugly. Really, the only thing that changes is the radius. So what we can really ask is, does the radius stay constant? So instead of diamonds, we're just going to have this. So if we can answer yes to this, then we are going to use right forces. If our forces are constant, we should use forces. And specifically, if the radius stays constant, that means it's moving in a circle. So that we can use not just any sort of acceleration or angular acceleration, but specifically for the RTZ system. So our acceleration, the R, would be equal to R omega squared, or V squared over R. Our acceleration, the t, is r times alpha, and our acceleration, the z, is zero, right? That we have circular motion. We know it's circular motion because we know our radius stays constant. So we could answer, of course, no to this. And then if we're answering no to this, we then want to ask, right, are the sum of the external forces Zero, do we have no external forces? And the way to think about this for gravity, right? Gravity and space in general is very easy to have things be kind of separated. And so we have, are all objects in the problem in our system? If all of the objects in our problem are in the system, then we can't have any external forces. And this could also be right very much for moving in a line. So we'll talk about that. If we start having right multiple motions beyond this, then we're going to start asking for this. But this is our conservation of translational momentum. And then another thing to see or ask is ask if energy or angular momentum is conserved. So if we are moving in a circle, forces are probably going to be all that we need. But if we are have some of these uh, conservation equations, we want to then ask if we have multiples of them as well. So just as we can say yes, we can say no. And if we say no, we're going to ask a very, very similar question, right? Are the sum of the torques external equal to zero? And what we can ask for this is, can our system be one moving object and then our axis of rotation is a stationary large body. 
So if we are talking about a satellite orbiting the Earth, or if we are talking about a planet or comet orbiting the Sun, it's a really good assumption, right, to say that the Sun isn't really moving very much, and that we can just look at the motion of that one object. So if we can do this, say yes to this, then we have our conservation of angular momentum. And we want to keep asking for this, right, ask if, well, we already asked if translational momentum was conserved, and we said no, so we also want to ask if energy is conserved. Why we are doing this is very often conservation of energy will give us some of the equation, but it won't give us all of it. And we want to ask angular momentum and translational momentum first, because very often if we say energy, we kind of just clap our hands and are done, but we're oftentimes not done. And so we want to make sure that's not the case. And then of course we can still say no to this. And if we're saying no to this, then we're asking, right, is energy conserved? Or do all forces conserve energy? And just a reminder for this one is that gravity conserves energy. So if we have objects just moving around in space and gravity is our only forces that we care about, very often we can say that right, energy is going to be conserved. So if we have this conservation of energy, if we say yes to here, just a reminder that our potential energy from gravity is negative gmm over r, and we have right a k for each object in the system. And we have a U for each line in or through the system. Each interaction line that we draw in our interaction diagram will be like this. And then just as we said last week, if we have to say no, then we write simplify. We make simplifying assumptions. And then we go back to the start and continue this all over again. So this is how to figure out what framework to use specific for gravity, right? A little bit more specific questions that we can ask. And each time we come up with a force, we can, of course, ask more specific questions than we had in the previous video. And this is an example of that.